I'm Adam Ball and this is Ben Ammons. Um, I mix Bullet for my Valentine. Ben mixes Skunk and Ansi, and now we're going to go through Skunk and Ansi's show file at Rock Tech Studios. And see uh, expose the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, cool, alright. It's um, my, my turn to have a go. <laughs> I think, well, one thing we didn't really touch on yours was layout, because obviously you've got. You're banked. So I'm, for yeah, me, I'm linked there. I'm kind of always, my entire mix is there. Yeah. And I'm always on DCAs and groups. And what we're talking about before with like subgroups is I have some subgroups in the DCA and some not. So some things I'm pushing with the DCA, I'm pushing things into compression. Yeah, yeah. And some things I'm not. So my guitars, the, the guitar subgroups you can see are in the DCA. Yeah. So when I lift him for a solo, the graphic's not chopping. Yeah, no, that's actually, that's something we didn't touch on, yeah. So the same with me with my drums, because I don't push into the into them, because I like them to just sit. Oh, you see, I do. So I'm, I'm yeah, that's it, you, you do. We bullet, I, like, we bullet, I don't, because yeah. it doesn't need to go anywhere for their entire gig. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I like it to be just sat there. Yeah. So, but, I mean, for me, as I say, that's... That's 99 times my where I am with the gig. Um, the centre section never changes. I've got various little utility bits, pink noise, iPods, my talkback sends and for shout yeah. boxes and all but that kind of stuff. time, that's your vocal. Yeah, all my yeah. smart stuff. I've got an input for house console for supports or whatever. Yeah. And, and again, I've got the click coming in, click going to Matrix, so I can send that to the lighting guys on a Matrix in front of house, but then I send the click into an AUX so I can bust that up to him. So there's a few, but show-wise, it's always the same no matter what band I'm mixing. I've got all my vocals. I've got my two drum returns, two drum reverb returns, because as we said earlier, I mix with way too much drum reverb. So that's kind of, they never normally go down, they only ever really go up. Um, <laughs> and and then enough. my spot delay, and I have the send, and again, the lead vocals are sending. On this guy, I've got the click here, and it's not set to the mix, so I can't push it in. I like the visual thing for the click, because there's some songs that will just come in, mm. and if I haven't got the lighting guy near me, or whatever, I, that's a great one for me to just know. There's just a couple of songs where I have to be poised to do something at the very start. Yeah, so where, they're like gonna, to, where they're going to come out of darkness, and you need to keep an eye yeah. on it for when they're coming on the air. So I like that kind of visual thing of just having the click there, but yeah. that layer stays up all the time, and then my entire band's over here, so the drums rest of the drums, all my bass lines, all my guitar lines with skunk, which is a lot. A um, few bits, you know, little track line we've got, then we've got Aries keys, then we've got some percussion, we've got a gong drum that comes on for one song yeah. that, that runs on. Um, Aries percussion as well. I've just got some ambient mics there. And again, it's a group of people that, from the looks of things, just hit things. Yeah, yeah, there's no fakery in it, it's yeah. not. There's a few little bits, similar yeah, thing. Little the little sparkles. bits of tracks are art. There's some strings and bits and pieces like that. But, you know, we have a session player with us, um, Eri, who plays keyboard. She plays extra guitar. She does all the backing vocals. So with the guys, it's very much everything you hear is being played. Yeah. Um, which which obviously makes it a lot more fun to mix. But um, as far as drums, then, I won't lie about a lot of reverb. Yeah. And it's that kind of thing of on its own, yes, everything else in, it goes. But I'm using that instantly, as we said about, you know, I, it's an it's a EMT 250 plate. Pretty long, well, it's actually pretty short for me. I was actually using pre delay oh, in there right. as well, I'm a liar. Look at oh. that. <laughs> Normally it's about 2.6 for snare drums for me. I do go quite long. Um, so I've actually reined it in a little this bit. Is in this is showing how. How a show file evolves from day yeah. to day, like you know, like it's yeah, there's things I spotted on my show file which I'm like, yeah, which you've hey, just done it, you've gone yeah. in on day one, we know stuff, and then at some point you've just gone, ah, yeah, because yeah, that's not my, <laughs> it's good for this, that's not my, <laughs> set. but um, and then he's going to a room as well, which is actually the same preset, but it's mainly the the delay time, there's no pre delay in that again, it's, yeah, so you're doing a similar thing, it's super short, and I've opened up the filters. So yeah. I like so my kick drum and my uh, and my and my toms go to that, and I like a bit of that kind of resonance on the drums as well. Yeah. So I've got because um, I gate my I don't gate snare drums at all. I've got gate on the side snare, but the toms I gate really heavily, and there's certain parts where I'll bypass those gates and I'll back them off musically. Um, 
you kind of don't have to with Mark because he hits like an angry horse. Yeah. Are you he's, still not gating your kick in? Because that's a, a similar thing to me. Like, no, like, no, I'm gating that, but... Yeah, because I, I, I remember back in the day, you never had a gate on it. It was just a DBS 160 yeah. on your kick in and that were it. Yeah. And I remember that. And I think that came from, and no offence to the bands I was working with then, but kind of inconsistent right foot. Right, right, right. Mark, I'm absolutely blessed with this band because he's bigger than me and he hits like four and he is, like we were saying about consistency, it's just every single hit is 200% yeah. and it's just, it's great. So, you, you know, it keeps your reverbs consistent, it keeps your drum compression consistent um, and especially with these guys, you know, where the one thing the band are passionate about is bottom end. We travel everywhere with loads of extra subs kick drum and bass guitar they're so passionate about bottom end and feeling it um, so it kind of so having Mark is behind the kit is is great but but yeah so as I say I, you know I like a lot of that bottom end in the reverb so the drums are, it's, it's kind of it is pretty much those two reverbs um, snares going to that kick snare and toms are all going to that um, so that's somewhat different between me and you because I I have a reverb for each individual thing, so I have one for my drum, mm. one for the room for the drums, and uh, for my snare I've got one, and then for my toms I've got another. My thing is, like what we were saying earlier, is I like to kind of build the room that I'm in with drum yeah. reverbs, because they are the thing that's going to get the most response out of a reverb. So I build the room with that, but then my guitars are going to that plate, my acoustics are going to that, uh, sorry, my guitars are going to that room, um, my acoustics are going to that plate, and once I've built the room, then I'm just putting people in that room. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I've never done the kind of million different reverbs for everything because I don't want that. I'm using reverbs to create, to build my space, which I think is why when you solo it, there is way more than there should be. But being a bit more, being kind of a bit overzealous on that is so th these building are essentially my... not your, not just your drums effects that you're riding through a show. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those, that's, it's, I'm, I do a lot of like big drum hits and I yeah, love yeah. pushing accents and things like that. So I'm kind of... But I mean, you have got other things in there for... Yeah, sick, yeah. Like swapping to look Yeah, so I've kind of got to be careful when I'm doing that because my guitars are going to be in there as well. But yeah. it's a, kind of a bit of a trade-off because I want everybody in the same room. Yeah, 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 You know, you're trying to create this, basically. You're trying to create a really nice sounding live room when you're in a, a horrible club or you're, you know, you're, you're outdoors somewhere or something. So, but yeah, it's all pretty simple. Kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom. Snare top and bottom on the second snare. I, I inherited this channel list from, from the last guy who'd done them for, for a long time before me. Um, I can't say I'd normally ever use a snare bottom. Oh, um, snare on a snare yeah, two, yeah, I know two. that from jobs we've done together. It's yeah. nice to have it there, so it's in and it's gated really heavily and it just does a little bit. Because um, I sometimes, I don't know if I'm doing it on this. No, I'm not, there you go again, I'm lying. Sometimes I'll feed the snare bottom into the room reverb as well just to kind of elongate that snap on bigger hits. Yeah. Um, yeah, EQ, I'm really savage. I, yeah. I don't want that mid-range. It sounds like a basketball. If I can get rid of it, I'll go as far well, as I can it. go. If, it, it's, if it's there, yeah. it's taking up room you can yeah. use for someone else. You and see all that thing on social media and someone will put up and be like, oh, yeah, here's my desk at the gigs. Oh, what are you EQing there? Shut up. <laughs> it, you can't hear it. You don't know what it is. Just shut up, you know. If it sounds right, I'm not. I don't yeah. care, you know. It's like but, but doing it on your channels. So that's your channels. Like, where does it go from there? Are yeah. you similar? To, are you similar to me, where you've got buses and then you're doing them? Yeah. Away? Everything's going into groups. So as I say, we've got a mono kit group, which again, then I've got that gone. Yeah, similar thing. I mean. And again, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I don't care. Got, got I don't want a little bit more than me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But I don't, I'm not in a fantastic sounding live room. Most of the time, you know, the, the main thing with front of house work is consistency, is getting you have in your head the idea of how you want the band to sound. Luckily, the management, the band and the fans agree with you. So then it's your job to create that every single night. And we're in far from ideal, you know, it'd be great to have a great big, you know, a, a, a lovely kick drum in a really nice live room and be able to, you know, distance mic it and have all my room mics on but you can't no. because room mic you know distance mic is just we, we, well this touches on the fact that microphones don't just pick up that one thing it's like yeah a microphone is made to pick things up and yeah. it's going to pick up everything 
Yeah, like, and it's it's about that kind of. And, but at the same time, you know, you, like we said, you're taking this tiny microphone and putting it there. Yeah. I'm stood here. I can hear this whole thing. But I put a microphone on it and I can hear that bit. So using those reverbs, we kill that. Yeah. Well, that's not exciting. That's not. But all that room you've cut out is where there's. It's made room for this. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. So I am. I am really savage on drums. Snare less so but my the, the main kind of my snare sound comes from compression and reverb and again i'm doing a kind of parallel with that 160 i've pretty much on all the close mics yeah i've got a parallel thing um, it's actually punched out on the toms at the moment that's kind of that's definitely a gig thing for me and it all comes yeah. on the power that i've got on the lower mid range in the hangs yeah and especially with the snare so that's the, the, drum, the drum EQs don't really change, and again, you can see I'm, I don't care, I'm not embarrassed, I'm savage with that mid-range. I don't need it, it's not, it doesn't come into that drum sound for me. Um, but definitely the compression is a huge thing for me, and my problem, it's all right if you're in front of K1, K2, GSL, whatever, every day, but then when you go on, you know, you're on smaller line array systems that inevitably lack, it's my biggest, my biggest bugbear in, in, in this is, is turning up to somewhere with a band like this where it's got to be slamming and you've got a little line array box yeah, that weird. just can't do anything yeah, below 200 mid. hertz yeah. and you can get it but it's not tight it's not transient so i'll then do a lot of kind of i'll do a lot more parallel compression on the drums to try and um, like bring in the low mids for, yeah for invent that lacking, kind yeah. of transient power so this show, this was, well, this was a, um, where, where are we? I, I know we're on K2 on this and there was a lot of it. So I'm not. <laughs> it's labeled. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you tell I haven't done this for a while. So yeah, so a lot of the compression's dialed out on this. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I mean, that's, um, that's some drums. Uh, what else have we got? Spills on the next page and overheads. We've got an SPD that's just doing some kind of little things and some tracks, and then we've got the big boy. So, are you? Is that your effect sender? That is a subgroup, and into that. Oh, it's inserted. We are sending um, kick in and snare top, and that's it. And then I've got inserted on that a what is it? One and a half second. EMT plate again with the bottom end wound all the way out and that just kind of and then I'm absolutely crippling that with the 76 and I'm guessing when you open that up you open it up and you you ride it into it it's it's for one point in one song and it is that loud right because it's it's the it's just got to do that yeah um I'd be interested to hear that all together after it so there's a, there's a couple of bits, and then like I say, we were saying earlier, I've got a, a weird um, delay on the ride cymbal mic, which is... Uh, not relevant when it's been playing like that, but again, that's just for one song where there's just, everything goes quiet and there's a bing on the ride cymbal, and, like yeah. and everything goes silent. So there's, you know, that kind of thing of just trying to work with the artist and understand the music and just bring little bits in that they want and being able to, oh, it'd be really cool if we could do that. You know, that's, that's your job is to be able to say, yeah, yes, we can to, do it. It's your job to recreate <laughs> what they want. Yeah. yeah. So again, we're hitting subgroups on that. I'm hitting things pretty hard. Snare drum compression is the main it's, one. It's nice to see, nice to see it being used. Um, again, a little bit of 160. And again, I've got a little bit of parallel stuff on there as well. Um, same with the tom, so I'm, you know, I'm doing a little bit on the subgroup as well. Um, overheads, same deal again. Medium attack, just to let that kind of front end transient through. Um, I'm kind of really finicky with overheads as to where as to where I sit them. Um, again, it, with what's it, going on with everything else on the stage. It's, it's, a, it's like me, depending on the, where you are. Yeah. Like one night you're in a thousand cat room, next night you're in. You know, you're at a festival in front of 80,000 people. Or yeah. Whatever. Like, and I've got a singing drummer, and I've got a singing bass player, and I've got a singing keyboard player, and then I've got Skin who goes everywhere. Yeah. I mean, everywhere. So it's a she'll go out you, you've got 30 rows into the like crowd. I would have vocal. Yeah. yeah. Or she'll be sat on top of the drum kit. You know, there's nowhere she doesn't go, so you've got to be prepared for that. So, um, but yeah, so there's <coughs> there's some drums.